Hi guys, I'm back again with my lovely jumper on um, and I'm just going to show you, well I'm, I'm just doing a little brief introduction to a video that was filmed of me on the farm back in May this year. Um, it was a, a friend of mine's son who's doing, I'm, I'm going to have to look up what he does because it's not my thing really, he's doing a um, level 3 creative media production course and uh, basically he's only 18 and he, he approached me and said would it be possible to come and do a film on the farm because he's interested in conservation and wildlife and, and all, which are all things I'm passionate about but also he's interested in the farming side of things and at the time in May when he filmed this the milk price was very low and it was having a big impact on some of the farms so we thought we'd do a piece about our farm and on a broader sense you know what it's like to run a small family farm so what you're going to see now is that video um, and it's a cracking piece of filming I was really impressed with what he achieved like I said he's only 18 and it's, it was actually, it proved to be really good because actually, I was just reading this, he won uh, an award for it. Um, he won uh, Best Factual Film of the Year for his course. So um, that's pretty impressive really, isn't it? Um, I will put the link, if you want to see what he does, I'm going to put a link to his website at the bottom of this video so you can click on that and you can go and see what he does. But he, it was a brilliant thing to be filmed by someone rather than me doing the filming for a change. So without further ado, I'm going to pass you on to James and his wonderful film. So here we go. Sit down and enjoy this. Cheers. As many as one in five of the UK's 10,000 plus dairy farms can be forced to close each year as falling milk prices and rising debt reach crisis levels of farmers across the country. Many farmers are at the end of their tether, operating at a loss and unable to receive any more finance from the bank. One local farm affected by this is New House Farm. Welcome to Glass Half Empty. dairy farm as long as I can remember and I think it progressed from a mixed farm to a dairy farm in my dad's lifetime. Um, starting with probably only about six cows then, probably 50 years ago. Um, so it probably wasn't a dairy farm originally when the house was built, it was probably a, um, a sheep farm actually, it was to do with the woolen industry. But as things changed, you know, wool went out of fashion or there wasn't enough money in it, things have changed, it's developed into um, a dairy, it's just primarily dairy now. Every morning is an early morning for Rich and his brother. As well as milking, the fields need to be checked and maintained. Fences and gates need to be secure. So really in this in and basically taking all the kit down, ready to put in another field down, down low by the barn and uh, give the cattle some grazing for today. But we only give them a little bit every day because otherwise they'd eat a lot. What we do is we put an electric fencer on here with a car battery and all it does is it puts a little charge through the wire and the, um, the cattle, if they ever touch it, will get a little small electric shock, nothing too major, uh, which would stop them from going ploughing through it. Because the thing is, a cow weighs 600 kilograms, so they've got a lot of weight behind them to push through anything. They always like to find a hole in the hedge or anything, so you need to have a, an electric fence on it. Even the experts get it wrong from time to time. Alongside the cows, there is plenty more wildlife to be seen. Rich and his family encourage conservation on the farm, just like creating a habitat for these barn owls. Okay, so uh, I just thought I'd show you a little bit of our conservation work here on the farm. Uh, and if we look up above us, we've got a couple of barn owl boxes. And these were put up here probably 10 years ago by myself and my father. Um, we made them actually out of bit of plywood and a couple of, um, of planks. And, and what it was is try and encourage barn owls to come back to the farm because they, they were here until the 60s and then basically uh, disappeared partly because farmers were using a lot of nasty chemicals in those days 
Uh, and I'd never seen a barn owl on the farm until about 10 years ago when, when I saw one in a tree and it, it kind of showed they'd come back. Now, obviously looking up there, you can't really see anything and you think, well, maybe they're not there, but there is something that indicates they are around. And I'll pick one up. This is, this is a barn owl pellet. They eat their food. What happens is they regurgitate the remains of it. And this, inside this little pellet will be a little, uh, probably the, some bones of a vole or something. So we'll have a look inside there in a minute. But um, basically, I'm just really chuffed that they're back here, really. I've, they're very shy creatures, and it's just lovely to have them. So we'll have a look inside here, and we can see what they've had for breakfast. There probably will be a skull in here somewhere. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. Look at this. Can you see this emerging? All this brown stuff, by the way, is the fur of the of the, its breakfast. And in, if you look inside, look, can we see the... Can you see that skull? There is a tiny little skull of a um, probably a vole or a little field mouse, and amongst all this is the ribs. Just popping out here are the ribs of the of the of its breakfast. So, and that just proves that a healthy population is here and what they've had for breakfast. So, there you go. I've seen quite a lot of changes in agriculture, really, in the fact that um, a lot of farms have got a lot bigger. Uh, and more specialised, I think, you know, uh, there were, was a time when a lot more farms were mixed farms uh, and that sort of really sort of faded out a bit and generally people sort of concentrate on one aspect of the farm which maybe they're good at, as it were, uh, and on this farm we've sort of done the same, we've stuck with dairy now. It has been difficult staying with dairy actually uh, because um, the milk price has been so blooming low for uh, the last year or two. To, um, it seems to be peaks and troughs with dairy, either it's really good or, or really bad. Uh, and last year was really bad, this year it's just sort of okay. But for next year it'll be, be better. <laughs> Unfortunately, due to the low milk prices, Rich and his family have been unable to update their parlour. However, this does the job. It's called the breast parlour. They milk twice a day starting early at 6am and again in the afternoon. When the cows are milked, it is cycled from the cows to a bulk tank which stores the milk at a cool 5 degrees and is held for two days. It's collected every other day. The milk is supplied to Muller for yogurts. Before the male calves are moved from the farm to the market, they are nurtured by the mother. But within three weeks, the calves are sent to market and the heifers are kept on as a new generation and potential milkers. Because we leave the calves on the cows for about uh, a week and then we take them off uh, into these pens. And the idea is to put them in these pens is it's a place where we can get them trained to drink from a bucket and get used to eating pellets. And then once they're um, on the bucket and been on here enough on the pellets then we'll move them on up to a pen where they're um, able to just sort of have a bit more space and then eventually they um once they're big enough they can go out to grass but the thing is you don't you can't put young calves out to grass they need to be uh strong enough and healthy enough to be able to sort of fend for themselves so you need to have them in a shed for sort of three or four months just feeding them cake you know which is animal uh, which is protein and some feed to get them strong um, and some farms actually take their calves off the cows within 24 hours. Some of them, they do this thing called snatch calving where they actually take them off as soon as they're born. But on this little farm we like to keep them on as long as we can. We've got a lot of different calves here at the moment because we failed our TB test in February which meant that we had a, we, they found a cow with TB, a big lesion in its chest when they did the post-mortem. Um, so because of that we're restricted on what we can do. We can't sell any calves now. Um, and that's a real problem for us because we've got uh, calves everywhere we've got to feed and normally we sell them at three weeks old well now we're actually having to rear them on uh, and it causes two problems first of all space we haven't really got the we're not geared up for keeping all these extra calves but also cost because we've lost all the cash flow that the sales would bring in but it's cost us a lot of money to buy the cake i just spent 250 quid just buying some calf cake the other week and that's half that's gone already uh, and going forward that's I'm not quite sure what will happen if we keep failing the test and we're going to be in real problems mm. by December. Once the cows have been milked, they are allowed free range of the fresh grass over the summer months.
want to support British dairy farmers, you should really look for British products when you're buying something. Uh, and a classic example of that is maybe buy Somerset Brie instead of uh, French Brie. Because at least you know the farm, the money you're, you're spending is going to a British farmer rather than the French farmer. Uh, and, and that income that you put back into British farming has a knock-on effect in the fact that, um, as you might have seen earlier, I've got barn owl boxes on the farm and things. That money pays for that to happen. So you're not just paying for a farmer's wages, you're paying for the upkeep of the British landscape and the land around it and the wildlife. So I think that's an important thing to do. Um, the other thing you can do is look for a little red tractor logo on, on, on products. And that signifies that that product is a British product that has been produced on a quite a high welfare standard. Uh, and we're tested on that welfare standard ourselves. So it's like an MOT for a farm and it means that everything's done correctly. So you can guarantee that it's, it's good. It's called farm assurance. There's a question ages old